jumping back to when, uh, for me and my people I talk about and, and, and what genetics you have and how you are, I think one of the cool things is that you, you were genetically gifted, but you never relied on that. You put in the work. Yeah. And I know that um, you trained over in England and they started getting you up early, started getting you to run. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I always talk about is that I, I don't think of anybody in any sport that trains more than MMA yeah. because of the fact that there's so many things and so many facets that you got to cover in training. It's not like you can skip wrestling, you can't skip uh, jiu-jitsu, you can't skip the, uh, the workouts, the cardio, uh, the sparring. There's so much... And something you guys can't help but do is overtrain. Yeah, that's just going to go with it because you have to do so many hours of training. Yeah. I feel that, I feel like that. I feel like I've overtrained a few times for a couple of fights. And and we were talking about a couple of different aspects. Is do you ever go into a fight injury free? Injury free, one hundred percent. No, never. But the closest one was when I fought John Jones. This kid is like one of the best fighters in the world. And uh, at this time, I didn't know he was. The, I didn't know he was. The, uh, I didn't know he was that good. I didn't know he was the best fighter in the world at this time. I just knew he was really good. And what year did you fight him? I'm bad with years. Okay. I'm really. I'm, this is one strange thing about me. I'm not going to be the old guy back in <laughs> back in '75 yeah. when I yeah. see. I go right back to '60s and '50s. So no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think about that sometimes when I when I'm bad. But it, this this had to been at least seven years ago. And and uh, I was almost a hundred percent. I had a knee injury from college, but at, at this time it wasn't bothering me, and I was in good shape. I went to Colorado, trained the hardest I ever trained. Normally I only run like three miles. I was in Colorado in a high altitude. Right. I was running like six and seven miles. I was training really hard. I everything was a hundred. Everything was hundred. I was knocking sparring partners out. And that was and and I was overconfident. But other than that, I never been to a fight a hundred percent. How'd that feel? Uh, not to lose, but to know that you battled the greatest, or possibly the greatest. Well, you know, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm a fighter that fights with honor. I, I fight with a with a lot of honor. I want to when I beat a guy, I want to know like you know what I beat him because I was better than him. Uh, and he was at his best. And he was yeah, and he was at his best. Uh, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it 100%. John Jones is the best fighter I ever fought. I fought a lot of people, and he's one of the best fighters I ever seen. But um, when I fought him, he fought like a coward. You know, he he fights really dirty. I said it to his face last last time I saw him. I said I said it to his face. He he pokes you in the eyes, and he keeps his fingers in your eyes, and um, so you can't move because he got that long reach. They had to like change the rules just for him, but they don't get on him. And he kicks your knee backwards, which is uh, something that's, it should be a no-no. You know, like we're Conrad's. It, it should be something that you, it should be so illegal. A chess match relative to I'm trying to purposely hurt you. Yeah, yeah, instead of trying to just beat you and stuff and, like that. And knock you out. Like, it's not only trying to hurt you, like um, your eyes is your weakest thing. Like when we automatically close our eyes when, when they're in, in danger, right? And kicking your knee back in, that's the, those are two points. Like if you're a fighter, those are two things that, like, in the back of your mind, like, like you, you know, you, you have to, you know, you have to, like, um, really, really worry about because somebody kick your knee backwards, it's, it's the fight's pretty much over, pretty much unless you can your fight's over, and then also possibility of career over. It, your career could be over, and then somebody poking your, poking your eyes, it's like real psychological. I don't know who taught him to do that and be that way. It's smart, but it's no honor. So I, I can say like. Even if he hadn't done those two things, it still would have been tough to, to beat him. All I'm saying is he he didn't have to, you know, he, he's so good, he don't have to do, do those do things. Do those things. But um, he's a real smart fighter. If you're getting the best of him, at, you can go back and watch his fights if you ever want to think about the mind of an MMA fighter. If, if, he, if he's in a fight and his opponent getting the best of him in any way, he's, if he's, you start going, he's going for your eyes and kicking your, kicking your knee back, which is smart. And and, I, and you got to sit sit back and think like, why well, do I want to win fights that bad? Should I take this technique on? Should I do or should I continue to fight with honor? More of that samurai approach. Yeah, complete honor. Yeah. Um, asking questions about this is is uh, the amount of training you would have to do to compete as an MMA fighter. Was there nutrition when you first started, or nutrition come into play at any time through the whole career? 
My first time doing any nutrition is when I fought Kevin Randleman. I, I don't remember the year. Um, that's a that's a beast. That's a beast. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Physique wise too. I mean, yeah. just outside of uh, uh, I don't know how much weightlifting he did and stuff like that, but it just a, like a great physique. Yeah, it looked like he did a lot of weightlifting. I fought him when, and young in my career, and I was really worried about him because he was a great wrestler. Like I said, I only started right. wrestling when I was 17. Right. So, you know, if I ever went against a great wrestler, they always had advantage on me. My hands were probably a little bit better, and my ground game was probably a little bit better than his, but he was good at uh, controlling and taking to the ground, and he looked really strong. He looked he looked stronger than me. So I, I met this um, bodybuilder woman. Her name was Dawn Real, and she was the first bodybuilder I ever met because, you know, come from Memphis, you don't see any bodybuilder. Right. right. And, I'm, and I moved here, and I met her, and... Um, and she said, "Let me do, let me do your nutrition. Let me do your diet." But she said, "Because MMA guys, y'all y'all don't know anything." Right, about right. That. Yeah, and and uh, it took her a, took her a couple of uh, weeks, and she tweaked my diet. The first diet she had me on, I, I I didn't have any energy, and she upped my carbs. What she had me doing was eating like six times a day, really small meals. And before that, you were doing, I was doing fast food. <laughs> you know, two or three times a day. Yeah, uh, I was eating like yeah, two or three times a day. All right, I gotta stop you for a sec, because because if you guys go back and look at his physique and, and um, see what he looks like at that time, and then on top of that, so you got this guy that looks like because uh, um, Randleman looked like he was could win Mr. Universe. Yeah. Um, but you were no slouch, and you had these shoulders and arms and traps, and you'd come out, and uh, I. Because I could see you as a pro wrestler too. Because yeah. you could just walk right over and just just be you yeah. in the pro wrestling world. Because you looked so intimidating, and looked like you like, did trap work all day long, and you didn't do that. And you were eating fast food. And I always say that that's the genetic freak. That's the guy. And you were training at least six, if not more, hours a day. Yeah, at then, least. When I was young, yeah, six, so you were doing everything. The pinnacle of destroying the body in a sense of health and fitness, and not creating a physique. But I think it messed me up because now I uh, have hypothyroid. I, I, I think that's kind of messed up my body doing, doing, and with the cutting weight wrong. I, I really think uh, I'm trying to talk to some specialists and they can't really tell we're me. Gonna, we're going to work on that. We're going to work on the nutrition aspect of this, yeah. you and me together, and uh, with Rez, and we're going to work on the training with you. Um, and I'm going to show you guys at 4041. Yeah, 41 next month. So in a year from now, we're going to straighten a lot of that stuff out. And I'm going to help you on this bad boy. All right. I'm All right. You I'm good, good with that? I'm, I'm good with that. So because I'm going to make sure that we work on the thyroid, making sure that's good, making sure the testosterone level is, is healthy and making sure that you're good. Because I hate the fact that uh, um, you, you, with most people, you, you give up a lifetime of your passion and stuff and you put everything on the line. Uh, and I don't think society realizes how much damage happens to oh, you. Yeah. And so now you just went out, and I hate this when I see true warriors. They go out and they give everything and their whole heart. And, and by 30, by 40, they're done. But they're broken. And then the society just kind of pushes them to the side. Yeah. And I want to be able to help you and get you in the best shape of your life. Yeah, that, you. that'd be good. You know, the fans, they get on me. They don't understand. They just no. think I don't work out no more. I train just as hard now as I did back then, and my diet is, is even better now. See, they don't that. comprehend some of the main things, yeah. is that you got your body used to eating a poor nutrition uh, and training six to seven hours. So your body adapts to those things. And so now we got to reverse and take you, which society goes, wait, no, you wouldn't take them off of the training. Yeah, we would. We'd slow your training down to where you'd only train like three days a week and get your body used to that and then put nutrition in, in a right way Back to like that six meals a day. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wake up at four in the morning with me, <laughs> but but we'll get you up before Heath Evan wakes up. So um, at least by seven, <laughs> yeah. um, and then get the nutrition together, and you'll see how we can try to reestablish your body and your metabolism and and make you healthier at this stage. This is going to be a pet peeve of me to make sure, and I'm going to be on you on this. I'm down. So no, just know that, man. You, you have no you not, you have no idea how serious I am, and like when you look at yourself in the mirror and you see like your new you versus how you was back in the day and and like I know what I'm doing I know that I'm not eating fast food and stuff anymore like I was when I was younger and how and how my body was back then and versus I'm like I don't even know this guy like what's, what's going on I went to like a couple of specialists and they can't tell me anything they they can't tell me nothing I'm like why you guys are thyroid specialists why you can't tell me they don't tell me anything about diet 
All they say is like, "Huh, you gotta take these pills for the rest of your life." They want to, uh, uh, and and I understand this. In, in the medical field, what they want to do is they don't want to fix it. They just want to take care of it for the moment. Let's just let's give medicine. You're fine. Go on your day, and that's the average. But it can't be fixed, though, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, 100 percent. But the pro- here's the, here's the problem. Ed- education only gets you so far. Mm-hmm. Experience. Nothing can beat experience. Um, and the great thing is I've lived this for 40 years and I understand this and I've worked with experts in the sense of experts in health and fitness that actually do this stuff, the athletes. Mm-hmm. And I work with them and I change it. Yeah, the problem with, um, there's no problem with education. The problem with people in education is that their cup is full and there's nothing else there. Yeah. And what they have to do is take in consideration trying to reestablish the body from the start and mm-hmm. bringing it back down. Um, and medication is understandable and why the majority of doctors do it and it, it's the easiest way to just take care of your problem. Um, and what's funny is that it, my girl, as we were going through the process of having a baby, they gave her so much medication that it caused a hypothyroid. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And now it's been uh, six months and we're fixing it and it's coming back to normal. And it's, oh. and it's from 100% terrible that you got to remove this this is the worst thing in the world the doctors are demanding do not have a baby uh, uh you will never have a healthy baby you you're, you're destroyed we got to operate to me going oh my gosh i hope this doctor loses her license to the point of where she's now healthy without doing any of that stuff wow. and then here's the, that's the problem with the medical field with, yeah. with with the reality of being an experienced person that does this so right. for you guys at home if this is a completely different discussion uh, I'll go into that if you guys want to go into that at a different time. Yeah. Um, but but this, I'm going to help you. Oh, and we'll you. be able to talk in a year. Yeah. And you go, they said this, that, and the other thing. They said medication when everything can be controlled in different ways. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm open for that. I love the fact that yeah, you're somebody that came from a place that, because I can't relate with where you grew up. I can't. I grew up in a... In a, in a location of Kirkland, Washington, where we left the front doors unlocked and the cars unlocked and everybody was nice and everybody's neighbors and there was no crime and it was just a beautiful time. <clears throat> and I grew up in, the, in that with a family that was born and raised to do martial arts and powerlifting and bodybuilding because all my nine brothers and sisters did it. Mm-hmm. And so what I like is that even though I grew up in that kind of uh, family, um, mm-hmm. I still went and lived my dream. And I love the fact that you came from a place that I can't even fathom. I can't even understand how tough that is to grow up like that in that neighborhood. And you still came up and, and have lived a beautiful dream yeah. where so many people would be like, be honored to be able to say, I, I, you're on the level of Rampage, a legend. And uh, yeah. I love that you did that. And yeah. you show these guys. You show them more than most of the people that I know that you can go from somewhere like that yeah. and still be yourself. It, it's a, it's the mindset and mindset and me working out with you today. I I learned a lot just by watching you, how how nice you are to everybody in the gym. No, oh, thank you. You know what I'm saying? It's genuinely nice to everybody, and you know everybody's happy to see you, and you even stop your workout to you know I never I never seen stuff like that before, and that that, that inspires me to to be more like that because um that my my thing is I I, I don't know I I guess I'm like socially awkward now. I used to be a big people person before, and now I'm I'm socially awkward, and you know I, I have to I have to deal with. It was good for me to see someone like you how, how nice you are to people and stuff like that. So I appreciate I, that. Yeah, because in the gym, like I normally like shy away, like you know, be I'd be kind of nice, but like you know, from a you know standoff point. But now you invited and hugging people, shaking people's <laughs> hands, taking pictures while you're working out kills my workout. But <laughs> I, I say that I I think like. Uh, we're here for, uh, uh, you know, that we're here because the fans, mm-hmm. um, and, and there's a lot of champions. There's been tons of Mr. Universes, but, uh, I think the one thing is I stay true to who I am and, and, and I appreciate that. And I think for me watching you and how you are and how real you are, I wish more people would be that sincere. I mean, everybody knows my girl Mona is 100% real. She don't like you. Just say to your face, wow. you know, like you did with the Jones, you know, you said you yeah. fight dirty. Yeah. Mona will just say it right to your face. And I love that, uh, that I learned that later on in life, 
that that oh, just pure honesty is a beautiful thing because yeah. you're not hiding nothing, you're yeah. not putting on a, f a facade. Who you are is who you are, and and all the other guys you were talking about about how they hype things up and how they yeah. sooner or later, yeah, the curtain gets pulled back at Oz and yeah. you see what's really going on. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, and you do the real thing, baby. I I try I try my best. I still love the sport. I still got two fights left on my contract. I love it. And then, I, then after that, I don't know. I probably like, I probably try to focus on more TV and movies. Probably, you know, I would like that for you. Yeah. Because I want to see more stuff. A team. Yeah. Man, that's, that was uh, that was awesome. And you've done others than that, but I, I mean, a, small stuff. A, yeah, you, you, you're doing it though. It's fun. You're doing it. It don't hurt as bad as fighting. <laughs> yeah. It don't hurt as bad, and it's fun. But that's what I want to do. I like entertaining people. Yeah. That's, that's what I want to do once I retire. I can start uh, studying more acting. I haven't studied enough. I need to... You know, so we've talked about this, and, and you guys don't know this, but it's, it's, it's cool how ambiguous, ambiguous you are to the whole, I don't know who the producers and directors, I, I just go out there and do this. And that just kind of shows you again, you have that childlike quality of uh, uh, dreaming and, and who you are that you don't try to pretend, which is great because that that is just 100% who you are. And I think you as you, I'd watch you do everything, what, you know? I wish, I wish a lot of directors and producers felt that same way. <laughs> oh, they were, they, yeah, they, I, they, can, I can't win an audition to save my life, man. I'm just not good at auditioning because I don't know, because it's not real. It's not real. I have the hardest time doing, I, I auditions for stuff and then I, then I see it on, in the movies, and I see it on TV, I'm like, wow, I could have... Could have done that character. Done, but, but I'm just not I'm just not good at auditioning, so, you know, it's just one of those things. I, gotta, I guess I have to study more. Auditions are always an interesting thing. You go in there, and, I, and this has happened a number of times. I went in, and I'm like, oh, I crushed that. I absolutely crushed it. Um, and then I, I, I talk to my agent, and they're like, no, nothing. And then I go in, and I absolutely blow it. And they call back and go, you got the spot. You got it. <laughs> They loved you. I'm like, what the heck? It, it must be your personality they're looking for it then. They, they really do. It's like, I think with anything, people want to see your very best. And if you can just show them you, yeah. and I know this is cliche and I, I hate this, but everybody's taken, so just be you. Mm. It really is true. Because yeah. when you go into the room, if you're that person that they want to see, you got it. Yeah, and, 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 and you're trying to go in there and portray something that you think they want you to see. Yeah. It's you in that situation, um, mm -hmm. but I know you're going to keep doing this, and you're, you're going to yeah. keep bring because I think you, I think you're awesome. And then, Thanks, where can we see the next fight? Is it anything? You got two more fights on your contract. Nothing, I got nothing signed, but, I got, I know, but I'm, I'm in Bellator. Okay, and, you know I got two more fights with them. I don't know when my next fight is or nothing like that. And, and hopefully, before I retire, I would like to do a boxing match, but I don't think that's in the cards for me. But I would I would love to try one boxing match because you know I've done everything in MMA that I train. I, Done a kickboxing match. I've done jujitsu matches, and I've done because um, you were over racing. with pride too. Yeah, yeah. And I did a K one fight. And a K one fight too. I did two K one fights. So I just want to do one boxing match because then I I would have had a match in all my arts that I know. Right. And so maybe maybe I I can even do like a you know when I retire I can do like an exhibition or or the. You know, listen. I hope it's not for six months because I want six months with you. Oh yeah. Of nutrition and training. Cause then I want to. Cause in six months, then they see you come out and they go, "Well, wait a minute." You think you think I can change in six months? Six months, I'll guarantee it. Wow, I'll guarantee it. Six months, um, we're gonna get some picks in this next month of you, and All then right. in six months we'll do some more picks. All right. And we're gonna check your uh, blood levels. We'll check your uh, T level, everything, and I'll show them. All right. I'll All show right. them what's creation. Yeah. If you work with somebody that's willing to learn. And yeah. I can already I'm, tell you're that person. I'm willing, I'm willing to learn. My only problem is right now I have a chef at my house. I found somebody. That's great. I found, but then she's like temporary because she, she, I found a good one. And she's friends of friends. If we she, don't do a chef, we do icon meals. Okay. And that way it's there. It's like uh, meal preps? Meal prep that, that I basically talk uh, to Todd Abrams, the owner, and said, mm -hmm. this is what Rampage is doing. Mm -hmm. Send them that. And so every Tuesday you get these meals. Mm -hmm. um, and then all you got to do, put them in the microwave for two minutes, boom, boom, sit down and eat. So like, and I tell people this, and this is from uh, WWE guys that travel, and you know this, mm -hmm. they travel. Mm -hmm. They get their foods, and, and I teach them all this protocol. You, you get the food, get it planned, um, like if I'm flying somewhere, 
uh, it, the food is there a day before, already in the refrigerator in my room. So I'm flying from here to wherever it is. Mm. Uh, I'm in Tennessee in two weeks. Mm. So it's already planned. The food will be there in my hotel room so I don't miss a meal. And I don't miss meals because mm. that's what it really comes down to. The nutrition is 90% of this. Mm -hmm. And then me just changing up your training so we get your body to recover again mm -hmm. and establish a foundation mm -hmm. with the least amount of work. Because everybody's like... Here's your world. Your world is, I'm going to train seven to eight hours a day mm -hmm. doing wrestling, all this stuff, boxing, matches. Uh, so your body adapts to this incredible that nobody could get healthy on. You could be a great fighter, um, but just the, the breakdown of your body could not recover. So now what we're going to do is teach it to do the least amount of work, but still get better. And that's where everybody loses it. Everybody wants to be a beast, right? Right. Yeah. There's a difference between being a beast when you need to, mm. and there's, there's a point of being uh, training smarter. Mm. And it's, it's always about individuals' bodies. Mm. How much can your body take? How much little it take? Res can do 50 reps on things. Now, if I can do that once a week, my body will respond. Mm -hmm. Now, if I did that all the time for me, it would adapt to it. And it wouldn't respond. And then it wouldn't respond. Oh. That's what your body's done. It doesn't respond to eight hours of training now. Now it's just shut down. Oh. Now your T level's gone. Uh, yeah, your yeah. testosterone has dropped. Yeah. All these things happen because you shut your body down by the amount of training you did. So we have to now teach it to go back to this. And I always talk about Mona as a genetic freak. Mona just had a baby mm -hmm. eight weeks ago, nine weeks ago. She's already back in shape without training. Holy <laughs> shnikes! Oh. All right, we're going to wrap up this thing because yeah. Titan just showed up to see the Rampage. Look at him. Rampage and Titan. What's up, baby? Oh, man. Brother, thank you for doing this no, no, today, thank you man. Thank me, brother. Thank and, you. And you guys just saw it. He's locked in. I'm, I'm going to work in. with you. Get this training and everything and nutrition Thanks. down. I really appreciate that, man. 100%, I need, man. I've been trying almost everything. Yeah, I just can't have you eating with Rez on the Sundays and the club and, <laughs> and the and the two AMs with yeah, the We haven't been to the, the clubs in, in years. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Long time. Yeah. These guys. <laughs> These guys. You know me. I'm a bed by eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Thank you, man. We're gonna yeah, do this you. again. Oh, it sounds good. I love it, man. Yeah. Thanks guys. Rampage Jackson, the legend. Uh, I am a fan. <sighs> Let's go. Let's go eat something again. <laughs>